We do our best to cover any announcements from the ad platforms whenever there's a new feature or updates to an old one, but quite frankly, there are so many changes that it's hard to keep up with. So since the end of the year, everybody loves a recap post. So in this one, we're gonna cover what we believe are the biggest changes to the Google Ads platform in 2024. The good news for us is that Google likes to also boast about all the different updates that they've made. And for this video, we're gonna be working off of this list of all of the updates they made to each of these different areas. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, I'm only gonna be covering the things that we think are big adjustments to the platform. And that's really just based on our day to day. I'm gonna get ahead of it. I'm not gonna talk about apps and I'm not gonna talk about retail and commerce. Those sections just aren't things that impact us on a day-to-day -day basis. And within each of these different areas, we will talk about measurement, we will talk about search, but a lot of those changes just don't make sense for us and don't feel like the bigger adjustments. Moral of the story is, we're gonna put the link to this blog post in the description down below. So if you wanna read through all the updates yourself and check those out, definitely do that because this video is just gonna give you what we think are the biggest updates. Don't come for me because I skipped something that you really wanted to hear about. I'm only gonna talk about what I feel comfortable talking about. So in that vein, let's just go ahead and start going down the list and covering the topics that we think are important. So if we scroll down here, first thing we're gonna come across is measurement. Now there are a few different things that you can see in here. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the bullet points of some of the biggest pieces. And effectively, the two biggest updates that we think happened in Google Ads for this that are gonna impact your day-to-day -day are gonna be this first one and then the third one. And the cool part is they both are in the same portion of the interface in Google Ads. So this first update is that now you can simplify how you can connect all of your first-party data with your third-party platforms. So getting all of that first-party user information into Google Ads just got a bit easier. So let's hop into a Google Ads account. And then to find this new area of the account, let's head over to Tools. We're gonna to go to Data Manager. As you can see here, we've got information about the Google tag, all of the connected products that we already have for our Google Ads account. And then right down here below, you can see all of the third-party integrations that can be added to a Google Ads account. This section here makes it so much easier to see what's added, what's not, what needs to be connected, and then to actually get those set up. If you wanted to set up a Salesforce integration, just click the button here and you'll get started on your way. But the other piece that's in that article, let's hop back to it, is gonna be this third adjustment down here, and that's tag diagnostics to help you understand how well your Google tags are set up and to flag any potential issues. This also lives directly in Data Manager in Google Ads. You just need to come to your Google tag section up here at the top, click the Manage button, so for this account, you can see that the tag quality needs attention, and depending on what your issues are, you can just come over here to View Issues. This account has two, so if I click this button, it now shows that some of the pages are not tagged and there are additional domains detected in the configuration. You can then check which those pages are, what the domains are and gets your domains configured properly. You can get that done right within the tag quality section. No need to go searching for what's wrong, guess and check, all that good stuff. It's all right here. And to me, that's a great improvement if you're trying to make sure that all of your tagging is up to snuff. Now, additionally, the third update that I like in here is that confidential matching is a little bit easier with your first party data. Now, anytime you upload an audience into Google Ads, any of your customer lists will use additional security measures to make sure that that data is passed into Google securely and safely. But this isn't anything that you necessarily do. It just happens when you upload a customer list. Not a huge day-to-day -day impact, but still will have an impact on your account. And that's it for the measurement section. There are a couple other updates, but we're not talking about those. Now let's start to shift into the search ads section. There's a couple of quick updates up here at the top that mostly talk about how users engage with ads, that ads are now in the AI overview. You can use Google Lens for your different ads, but personally, those don't make a huge impact on me on a day-to-day -day basis. The pieces that I wanna talk about are gonna be these four options down here at the bottom. So the first two are gonna be around your brand and how search and brand campaigns can work together. There are two different ways that you can apply brands to your campaign. It could be brand inclusion or brand exclusions. To talk about those, let's go ahead and jump into an account real quick. I'm just in our Paid Media Pros Google Ads account and I've got a search campaign pulled up. So if I go to the gear icon to get to campaign settings, I come down to additional settings and I scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see that there's a brand section down here. This is where these two things will apply. 
So brand inclusions. By applying a brand list as an inclusion, it means that your ads will match for the intended brand terms that you're trying to go after. This can be applied to all search campaigns. Nothing else is going to be adjusted in this, but if your brand has a similar name to others or gets commonly misspelled, anything like that, these brand inclusion lists can help you focus on only your brand or family of brands rather than getting more expansive here. Now you can see down below to use brand inclusions, you have to use a conversion or conversion value based bidding strategy. That means that you need to use either maximize conversions, maximize conversion value, or their subsequent variants, target CPA or target ROAS. You will not be able to use brand inclusions for manual CPC, maximize clicks, target impression share, any of that stuff. So just keep that in mind. Now, the last thing to know for brand inclusions is that even though it doesn't say it on this page, applying brand inclusions to your search campaigns will automatically opt you into the broad match setting for your campaigns. As you can see here, apply brand inclusions to search campaigns, then this button down here below. To turn on brand inclusions, you'll need your campaign to have the broad match campaign setting turned on. In the campaign settings section, that's gonna be up here, open this up and you have to use broad match keywords for the entire campaign. Again, we have to switch to a conversion or conversion value based bidding strategy. But if you followed many of our videos, you probably know that we don't love this broad match keyword section. It means that you don't get to have exact or phrase match keywords in a campaign, only broad. So if your brand campaign is doing well and you wanna use brand inclusion lists to focus only on your brand, and its subsequent products or services, you will have to opt in to the broad match keyword setting. Just keep that in mind. This is a cool update, but it requires a little bit of control to be given back to Google Ads with broad match keywords. And the second option down here below does not have any of these restrictions, and that's gonna to be to use brand exclusions. This is where your ads won't show for searches that mention the brand or its related products and services. This is great if you wanna keep your non-brand campaigns strictly non-brand, and you don't wanna keep applying your brand names and products and services as negative keywords to all of your search campaigns. You can easily just use a brand exclusion and you'll be all set. Speaking of keywords, two more updates for the search campaigns have to do with misspellings is the thing that they have in common. First is gonna be around negative keywords. Up until just this year, negative keywords only used the exact spelling that you used as the negative keyword. Now they include misspellings of terms. This is going to save a ton of negative keyword space, which can be really useful considering that there's a limitation on how many negative keywords you can use. But as you can see here, there are 1.5 million variations of the word YouTube that can be misspelled. So with adding just YouTube to the negative keywords, you'll be able to exclude that as a misspelling. We do have another video that walks through this update and shows some specific examples. You can check that out at the top of the screen right now, but this is a really helpful update. The second adjustment to misspellings is gonna have to do with your search query reports. Rather than reporting on each search query and its misspelled variants in separate line items, now Google is going to combine all of the misspelled versions of your search queries into one single line item, which is okay because now the negative keywords you would apply for that single line item spelled correctly will also apply to the misspellings. So you're not missing out on any negative keywords or anything. But what this does is it's gonna give you data back in your search terms report. Rather than having more data in that other column due to misspellings, you're gonna get more data back up into the line items of the search query report. And on average, Google says about 9% of search terms will be reallocated from that other line item up into the regular search terms report. Now, 9% might not seem huge, but just like in the accounts themselves, each account has some differing percentage of search terms that are hidden anyway. So odds are there are gonna be some accounts where they get a couple of percentage points back, but my guess is there are gonna be some accounts that just with these misspellings are gonna get anywhere from 10 to maybe 20% of search terms back in the report just due to misspellings. Overall, these misspellings are a great update because we're gonna get some data back in this last one, and we're not gonna have to work as hard and fill out as many negative keywords for this update. Definitely a couple of wins in my book. Let's keep moving on down the list. Now we're gonna get into some of the Performance Max updates. And there were quite a few that came out this year. So the first is that we're gonna have better insights into the performance for Performance Max campaigns. Now we're not gonna talk about each of these because it's gonna to be tough to go through them individually, 
but effectively, whether it's looking at your impression share, understanding campaign fluctuations, seeing how your budget is pacing, understanding how your campaigns are performing with different detailed demographics, or which assets are performing, you're going to be able to see more information with updated reporting in 2025. Since launch, Performance Max has been kind of a black box. We've gotten a ton more controls. We'll talk about some of those here in just a minute. But all of this additional insight is only going to help you make your Performance Max campaigns that much better because you'll have some understanding of what's performing well, what's not performing as well, and be able to adjust. Now, speaking of that, Final URL Expansion is one of the tools that, in my experience, Google really wants you to have enabled so that it can use any page on your website as a landing page for your Performance Max ads. And by turning it off, you really kill any of the volume coming through. That's at least my experience. But a lot of advertisers are hesitant to give that type of control to Google. Now you can set up an experiment to test whether final URL expansion can work for you and to see how it would actually work so that you can convince your clients or put them at ease that this is going to be a decent option for them just to make sure Performance Max can work as well as it should. If we keep scrolling down here, we now also have more insight into brand suitability. We can use the Content Suitability Center to limit which types of content Performance Max ads will run on. So if we're in a Google Ads account, Content Suitability is going to be over in Tools and in this section here. And here we can select the inventory type, whether we want it to be expanded, standard, or limited inventory. And then the other update, if we scroll down a little bit further, we now have Excluded Placements. These are going to be account level excluded placements that can work for YouTube, different website placements around the Google Display Network, as well as different website URLs that will work for search partners for the search component of Performance Max. That's going to be that last update here at the bottom. We'll be able to exclude placements to make sure that our ads are not showing on crap placements around the search partner network and that we're getting the best performance we possibly can out of the campaigns. Now, the next update I want to talk about is a pretty short one. The one that I like the best is down here. They're rolling out new options to the AI asset builder within Google Ads so that for the assets they create for you, you can now add brand guidelines. So this means your fonts as well as custom colors to make sure any new assets they create for you are within your brand guidelines. One of the biggest pushbacks we get on any sort of AI creative or any sort of automated ad asset for us is that it doesn't match the brand look and feel. So by having these additional controls, we can make sure that all of the ads for Performance Max campaigns adhere to those guidelines and everybody's going to be happy with the final product. If we keep moving down for demand gen, there's really just one update that I'm a big fan of, and that's pitting video assets into specific areas based on the creative that you're using. In the image here, it shows you about as well as anything. You can see that there are three videos applied. One is a vertical video. It's got the girl holding out the flower. The second one looks like a square, and the one down below looks like it's a horizontal orientation. In this little dropdown, you can see that you can choose to prioritize which locations those videos will show in. You can choose from in-stream, shorts, or in-feed based on the dimensions of your video to make sure that you're only showing the proper dimension video in its respective location. Again, this is a great option to make sure that you've got some brand safety and controls and your ads don't look really stupid across the demand gen placements, since there are lots of different locations that your ads can show up in. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to skip retail and commerce because we don't do a lot with that. Same with apps. And I'm sure that there are some additional helpers there. But for the most part, we're going to focus on creative solutions next. Now, overall, there were a ton of updates when it comes to different creative solutions for the accounts. The one that you see the image of that's rotating through, or at least the video, means that when you're creating new assets, you can supply reference images so that Google knows what the type of look, feel, and vibe is of your brand. So when it generates new assets, those AI images can look very similar to your reference images while still also leaning into the text that you provided. This is just another way that we can start to use Google's AI to generate new creative, but also make sure that it meets our brand guidelines and looks the way that we need it to when we're trying to create new ads. Now, additionally, there's other options down here below. There's going to be new editing capabilities. You can make adjustments to your videos, that sort of thing, as you can see down here. You can use video enhancements. And in this example, they show you a horizontal video that's turned into vertical. I will say, as Joe has pointed out many times, 
they've given you a really good example that's an easy video to transition from this horizontal landscape into vertical. But if you have a video that has really heavy focus on one side of the frame or the other, probably not going to be as easily cropped to fit into this vertical space. So this is definitely something to test out for your videos, but make sure that you're always checking it because it might not always enhance quote unquote, enhance your video the way that you want it to, which again is why those controls for the demand gen campaigns and the placements of your video is really a key option that we have that came out in 2024. Now, continuing with creative, the last thing that I really like here is the option to bring in creatives from other design platforms like Canva, Typeface, any of those additional platforms. If you create all of your different assets in something like Canva, and that's what your design team uses, you can import those directly to Google Ads now. No need to download upload, all that good stuff. It's super helpful and it also makes it a lot easier for you to make really good creatives because I can't speak for Smartly, Pencil, or Typeface, but we use Canva. We love it and they give you a lot of really great ideas and templates that you can use to make sure that your creative looks excellent when you upload it to Google Ads. We're coming to the end of the article. There is a display section, but we're not going to talk about it and we're only going to talk about a few quick things in the YouTube section. So down here, one of the things that I like the best is that we now we'll be able to use branded QR codes for connected TV. Joe has talked a long time about how to get people to take an actual action on YouTube with connected TV. QR codes are one of the easiest ways. When do you watch TV without your phone right next to you? If you like something enough and you're interested in it, they pop up a QR code. All you got to do is open up your camera app and you're immediately taken to the right landing page. Now, certainly we can't expect these to have the same type of engagement that you would for somebody on a laptop or a mobile device watching YouTube directly on YouTube, but it at least gives you some way to have a next step for a user to take other than heading to Google and trying to hopefully remember your brand name or product, whatever they saw in that ad creative on their connected TV platform. And then the last option was called out a few other places in here, but I wanted to talk about it mostly through the YouTube section is that now you're gonna have a little more insight into where your ads show around YouTube by having additional reports on the type of content your ads are running next to. And that includes shorts by being able to see different ad placements across campaign types. Like I said, this works for YouTube, but because other campaign types like Performance Max run on YouTube, you'll also be able to see this information for Performance Max campaigns as well. So again, just another way that we have more insight into where our ads are showing, and then we'll be able to add additional placement controls to make sure that we're not showing on content that's not safe for our brand. 2024 was a huge year for updates to Google Ads, and as you can tell by the fact that I pretty much skipped over at least three entire sections here. And then we only paid attention to maybe 50% of each of the sections that I did cover. There's a ton that isn't recapped in this video. Again, the link is in the description. Check it out if you want to learn more about any of these individual updates. But overall, I think 2024 was a pretty good year. I know sometimes we've had match types go away. Performance Max felt like a step back in terms of control. But as you can tell in the updates that they made over the course of this calendar year, there have been a lot of updates into how we can control our Performance Max campaigns, make sure any of the assets are brand safe, and gain insights into what's performing and what's not so you can make it better. My guess about 2025 is that Sure, there's going to be more automation that comes out and gets included in the Google Ads platform, but I think there's also probably going to be more controls that can help offset some of that as well. I think we're going to continue to get more insights into things and more brand safe controls to make sure that whatever we're advertising on the Google Ads platform is in line with what we want for our companies. If you have any additional questions about any of these updates from 2024, any thoughts about what's going to happen in 2025, or just any other questions about Google Ads in general, leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.